It's your brother, Larry Adenekon, welcoming you to the really, really knowing God channel as I lead this fellowship of information and inspiration in the knowledge of our God, all powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Inspiration, the PLACE. <music> This is the diligent devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on heaven is right here. And that's coming from Hebrews chapter 9, 23 to the end. A little prayer and then we jump into it together. Father God, we bless your great name of God. Thank you for the finite rest and the opportunity we have again to share together from the pages of your word as family. As we go on into that, oh God, we trust that you are going to accompany with us while at it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we ask it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Hebrews 9.23 Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of things in heaven should be purified with this, but the heaven things themselves with better sacrifices than this. For Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands, which are copies of the truth, but to heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often as a high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. Then he would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now once once at the end of all ages, he has appeared to put away sin by sacrifice of himself, and it is appointed to, for men to die once after this the judgment. So also Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, but to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Praise God. All right. So um, you remember all the things we have said about uh, the veil and and the the holy place, the holy of holies, or called the holiest of all. You know, we have said all that and uh, quite a bit of that in the in this uh, particular chapter, in the next chapter as well, if I remember well, and all that. So, but let's just it now says therefore it was necessary that the copies uh, copies there means uh, maybe look at the photocopy for example or the model or the pattern of the things or the blueprints if you, you know um of the things in heaven should be purified with this but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than this in other words uh the copies the pattern the model and all those things yeah can be clean i mean you have a house model and you put it on the table yeah you can clean it with brush you can clean it with a brush you know and, and things like that or or a blower you know, a blower, a vacuum cleaner, whatever. That's the way you can clean all those things. That's the model. That's not way you can clean a, a whole building just like that. It's going to be completely different. Yeah. So with the photocopy, it says that it was necessary that the copies of the things in heaven, God said to Moses, see to it that what you go to do is according to what you saw here. Go and do a copy of what you saw here back down there. So he says that, but that with the real thing now, the heavenly things themselves should be with better sacrifices than the blood, blood of bulls and goats. That's what he was going. He says, for Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands, which are the copies or the models or the pattern or the, or the blueprint or the... Um, uh miniature form or the toy version <laughs> i'm sure you have seen the toy version of an air on of an airplane and you see the children playing with it and all that yeah you know <clears throat> so christ has not entered into a holy place made with hands okay not the ones that were made with hands you know moses came and then did uh a, um a, um, a, a hand version <laughs> you know that's the way i can you know quickly put things together and make what looks like a you know um a statue for example, of somebody, or um, uh, you know, uh, use modern clay and plaster saint and do you know the one made with hands? Now he says that Christ has not entered into the holy place made with hands. Talking about the tabernacle, which are copies. Actually, we have said all that about copies of the truth. But Christ has entered into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Okay. Now, this is very interesting. Holy place. He's talking about the holy place. Picture again what we have been saying before now about the tabernacle that was completely out of, uh, out of the, um, the Gentiles place. Completely out of the tabernacle. And then there's the first court. Okay. And then there's the holy place. And then there's the holiest of all, the holy of holies. And we described all this with veils in between. And we said that Christ has penetrated through all those veils. That is to say, his flesh. He said you know all those things before now he's saying that he has entered into a holy place 
the one not made with hands the one that the high priest entered into was made with hands and it was a copy of the things to, of the one is in heaven a photocopy now christ has entered into heaven itself into the holiest of all not made with hands that's what it says now this is uh, something we should stop and really look at the power of this statement here remember that we had read earlier on how that it was describing the building of God and it says the building that is not made with hands and we went on to say that that building refers to us the church the church is the house of God is the building of God where God lives now not the ones made with hands is the church that is the building of God we said that earlier remember now there's something extra here and that is the punch of today's message okay now it says Christ has entered into the into heaven itself to appear in the presence of God for us if we are the if we say we are the building and he's saying now just follow my logic please if we say we are the, the church is the building of God and he's saying that Christ has entered into the holy place in heaven. Remember that the holy place is actually part of the building. If you look at the building, the tabernacle, the holy place was part of the tabernacle. If we say the church, like we have read in previous uh, um, passages, is the building or the tabernacle where God dwells now. Not the ones made with hands, but the one that is real, that God made himself. That's where he dwells now. And Christ has entered into the holy place in heaven. It implies that, um, and the holy place is part of the building, part of the tabernacle. It implies that either we look at it one way or the other. It, it means that either that holy place where Christ has entered into in heaven is an extension of us here, or we are an extension of the one coming from heaven. Somebody may look at me and say, what is this man talking? Let me go right again. We had established before that we are the building that God made, not the ones made with hands. That is the church of God. That's why I keep saying whoever wrote these Hebrews, the person was something, someone else altogether. Now, we are the house of God, tabernacle of God, building of God, temple of God, if you like. Okay, he's saying now that Jesus has entered into the real holy place in heaven. It means that the real holy place is in heaven. The rest of the tabernacle is us. In other words, we have a certain section of the church in heaven already. We have the uh, um, head of the church in heaven. A certain section of the church in heaven. Another section is here. And so, the whole thing is one old building. It's just that the Holy of Holies is in heaven, where Christ is now. It implies that whichever way you look at the building, if you look at it from the gates, it implies that the Holy of Holies, the inside of the inside, is in heaven, is an extension of us. Or if you look at it from the other end, it implies that the Holy of Holies is in heaven. We are an extension of the Holy of Holies. In other words, heaven is here already. We are just an extension. We are part and parcel of heaven already. And I pray that somebody may get this one. That somebody may understand that you are part of heaven already. Heaven is not complete, you know, without us. The church, the, the house of God, the tabernacle of God is not complete. The aspect in heaven and the aspect on earth, we are one and into part of another it's just that the the way it is structured and the location the the holy of holies the ah should i call it the northern side <laughs> okay the northern side the head portion is in heaven and the the southern side or the bottom part is on this part it's in it's on earth here yeah. but whether people like it or not we are part and parcel one of another and so that heaven extends to here and is therefore right here and it's the church hallelujah and i pray that people will get this when you understand this um nobody needs to you know, tell you not to compromise nobody you know so you know we don't need to preach to you to say my friend don't lower your standard don't come to the level of these people nobody needs to because you are going to understand you know exactly who you are you know what we are you you know oh hallelujah let's go on our time our time Okay, so he has gone into heaven in itself. That's why he said that's the heaven proper. But to use presence, he says heaven itself, heaven proper. Hallelujah. To appear the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest. You know, the high priest will offer once every year, carrying the blood of bulls and goats, you know, and all that. Hallelujah. So that he doesn't need to do that. He will have suffered in the foundation of the world. He has appeared once 
to put away sin. And as the, the, verse 27, it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. I'd like to talk about that one quickly. This puts to rest anything like reincarnation. It doesn't, there's no such thing. It is appointed unto men to die once. After that, the judgment. It is only once. Nobody comes back and comes back. You know, some people will say things like there's reincarnation. Somebody, you know, died and then he came back as this, I came. Nothing like that. It is straight from the Bible. Once and then judgment. Let's go on. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him. I like that. He would appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. For those of us who are eagerly waiting for him, he would appear. Unfortunately, some people are not eagerly waiting for Christ. They are rather eagerly waiting for the Antichrist. They preach about it. They talk about it. They do videos about it. They, you know, just go on about the Antichrist. Exactly who are you waiting for? Is it Christ you are waiting for or the Antichrist you are waiting for? The Bible says for those who eagerly wait for Christ, he will appear a second time. For those who eagerly wait for the Antichrist, let me not finish what will happen. Honestly, that's what it says. For those of us who are eagerly waiting for, that's the one we are eagerly waiting for. Not this one, you know, you know, the Antichrist was created, you know, as a creature. <laughs> May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. So those of us who eagerly await Christ, is going to appear sometime soon. This time around in a fantastic way. Let's leave it here. Please, we have taken so much time because I thought I needed to drive home that whole point that some people may just get it. That we are heaven honest <laughs> glory be to the lord jesus we are the house of god may god may, may god yeah, make it clear to you in jesus mighty name please remember to help us to grow this channel help us look at these numbers here just about under my you know right hand here are you satisfied with those numbers try and do something about it share 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 as much as possible god bless you while you do it. god bless you thank you